we're doing here is addressing the entire individual. And I think this is something that we do particularly well. And that I want to always temper that by saying how far we have yet to go. We are about solutions, we are about hope, but we can only do that if we understand the context of discrimination and stigma. Of course, we know the reality is that stigma is still very much uh, a determining factor in whether or not students seek out support. And uh, as a consequence, a lot of the work that we do is to kind of explore how do you ask for the help that you need in such a way that maintains your dignity, that you can clearly communicate to a professor, at the same time that you feel confident that these are things that you have a right to access your education. I was myself diagnosed with, uh, at the time it was called manic depression, we now call it bipolar disorder, uh, in the early 80s uh, as I started uh, my first degree as an undergrad. And so this three decade experience, either of my own uh, not having support, uh, not having offices like this uh, to exist to support me, and it wasn't until my doctorate that I received accommodation. This was enormous, uh, that it gave me confidence that I could ask for what I needed, that I was still competent as a scholar. As that work academically uh, came to fruition, so did my work within this field. And so the overlap for me is very strong. The support at Trent for students uh, that I work with is a really unique model. So accessibility is housed within the wellness center. So we, my colleagues, doctors, psychiatrists, nurses, counselors, crisis workers, we come together collectively to support students. And that then also um, spills into our relationships with other stakeholders on campus. So the college heads, the academic advisors, we have a wonderful rapport. And so we're learning, we're sharing, we have a student support certificate for staff and faculty to learn about students who may be disenfranchised, disabilities, uh, uh, first generation students for example. We have uh, our crisis worker offering a very heavily subscribed suicide prevention program. And so what I love about my job here is that we're not just talking about reacting and accommodating. What we see faculty doing is creating uh, learning environments where already there's an understanding that yes, the core requirements have to be satisfied, but there are many different ways that this evaluation can be achieved. And this comes from the support that again, this relationship between student affairs and our offices with faculty is uh, what is uh, informing this experience for students, which is exceptional. Um, and I think for students with mental health disabilities, to feel like they aren't a number, to feel like they're seen and heard, is probably the most important thing that they're experiencing at Trent.